The subject for today is the question of suffering. Obviously, this plays an important part in healthcare. Credit for much of this material goes to Betty Farrell and Christina Pachalski and their presentations at the Harvard Conference in 2007 at Harvard Medical School. Suffering is described as a loss of control, which creates insecurity. Suffering people often feel helpless and trapped, unable to escape their circumstances. Notice how this definition of suffering widens suffering from simple physical pain to anything that creates a sense of loss of control. A person is no longer in control of their destiny, no longer able to stop certain things from happening or to do certain things that they have chosen to do. And they may then feel trapped by their circumstances and unable to escape these issues. In most instances, suffering is associated with loss. The loss may, may be of a relationship or of some aspect of the self. It might perhaps be very important for this person to understand themselves as being sexy, beautiful. They've lost that. Perhaps uh, it's very important to this person's sense of self to be the breadwinner for the family, and they're no longer able to do that. It could be loss of some aspect of the physical body, perhaps a breast, perhaps a leg. The loss may be evident only in the mind of the sufferer, and everybody may say, why in the world is this person suffering? But it nonetheless leaves the person diminished and with a sense of brokenness. All of this points out that suffering is an intensely personal experience. What may be suffering for one person may not be suffering for another person. Like pain, the only person who is able to judge their suffering is the person who is enduring it. Suffering is accompanied by a range of intense emotions, including sadness, anguish, fear, abandonment, despair, and a myriad of other emotions. You know enough by this time to know that emotions and thoughts and the body and spiritual issues and social issues are all interlinked in the unity that is the human being, the bio, psycho, social, spiritual unity. Imagine the role then that intense emotions like those that are listed here play in the person's physical, social, spiritual functioning. Suffering can be deeply linked to a recognition of one's own mortality. When threatened by serious illness, people may fear the end of life. Conversely, for others, living with serious illness may result in a yearning for death. Whenever a person experiences suffering, they realize that they are ultimately not in control of their lives. They can't make it stop. They can't get back to where they were. They've lost control. And these recognitions raise for the person ultimate questions spiritual questions and diminish the person's ability to function psychologically, emotionally, socially, as well as physically. Suffering often involves asking the question, why? Why me? Illness or loss may be seen as untimely and undeserved. Why now? What did I do to deserve this? Suffering people frequently seek to find meaning and answers for that which is unknowable. No one can ever ask, answer the question, why did I get cancer? People will do far worse and not get it. People will do far better and get it. There's just no good way to know why suffering comes, except to say that we live in a broken, fallen, sinful world, and suffering comes to everybody, the Jesuses and the Jobs, as well as the bad people. You can see how these are ultimately spiritual questions and why spiritual healing is such an important part of caring for people as they endure suffering. Suffering is often associated with separation from the world. Individuals may experience intense loneliness and yearn for connection with others while also feeling intense distress about dependency on others. You can sense, I hope, the conflict on the one hand, I'm dependent on other people to do things for me that I've always been able to do for myself. Everything from breathing for me 
to giving me the right medications to cleaning my body. And at the same time that I'm distressed by this dependency, I also yearn to be connected with people, to be cared for. Suffering is often accompanied by spiritual distress. Regardless of religious affiliation, individuals experiencing illness may feel a sense of hopelessness. Atheists may feel the sense of hopelessness just as much as an evangelical Christian. When life is threatened, there may be a self-evaluation of what has been lived and what remains undone. When people find out that they're sick, even with what we might consider to be fairly trivial illnesses, they engage in a period of looking back over their lives and saying, have I lived well? Have I accomplished what I want to accomplish? Where have I failed? What's left to do? Becoming weak and vulnerable and facing mortality may cause one to reevaluate his or her relationship with a higher being. There's an old saying that there are no atheists in foxholes. And I suppose it's also true that in ICUs, people pray. No matter what their religious beliefs might be or what their religious practices might have been, when they are faced with their own mortality, they search for meaning and they search for a relationship with a higher being. Suffering is not synonymous with pain, but it is closely associated with it. Physical pain is also closely related to psychological, social, and spiritual distress. Pain which persists without meaning becomes suffering. If I've had surgery and I have pain, I know where it comes from. I know to expect it. And I know that as I heal up, it will go away. But when I have a nagging headache day after day after day, or I have a pain somewhere and I wonder, what could this mean? Could this be cancer? Could this be some serious thing? Pain which persists without meaning becomes suffering. It's what makes dying so difficult for so many people who experience pain and why pain relief is itself uh, a whole area of medical care that has gotten and deserves increased attention in recent years. Suffering occurs when an individual feels voiceless. This may occur when the person is mute to give words to their experience or when their screams are unheard. Imagine how important it is for a patient to feel that the physician or the physician's assistant or the nurse or somebody has really listened to her. When people don't feel listened to, when they are hurried into the office and hurried out of the office, and there's so much more that they wanted to say, and they don't really think that their doctor or their nurse heard what it is that they're trying to describe, then that person feels voiceless, and that gives rise to suffering. It may also happen when the person doesn't know how to explain what it is that they're trying to say which is why so much of effective patient care is communication. Until the patient is able to say, that's it, you've got it, that's what I'm trying to say. There are a number of causes of suffering. Suffering due to the patient's sense of independence and dignity being threatened. Living with uncertainty, not knowing how it's all going to turn out. The increased likelihood of a chronic and incurable condition, something that I'm just going to have to live with, that's going to change the way I live my life, the way I eat, the way I function, the way I work. Activity limiting conditions, pain for example, other symptoms that might make it difficult for me to do the things that I want to do, choose to do. Increased dependence on others for care, everything from changing a colostomy bag to having someone button me up because my fingers are too arthritic to do it to having someone give me life-saving treatments or drugs the financial strain medical expenses unemployment forced retirement these can be huge for people who are experiencing illness the social isolation being in the hospital it's not my own place. I can't see the kids like I want to. The grandkids can't go there. I can't go there. 
the isolation that comes even outside of the hospital as I may be confined to bed or confined to home or just unable to drive or get around like I used to. The strain that this puts on relationships. My wife has to take care of me now. My children don't get the grandpa that they used to have. Major life changes. Maybe it means selling the two-story house for a one-story house so I can get up and down the stairs. Maybe it means moving closer to the kids or closer to the physician. Despair, isolation, hopelessness, loss of joy, loss of pleasure in life, loss of meaning, loss of a sense of personhood. Who am I now, now that I am a cancer sufferer? now that I've had a heart attack, now that I have diabetes, now that I'm an amputee. Who am I now that I didn't used to be? Have I lost irretrievably that which I have always been? These difficult issues cause a great deal of suffering and I think you can see how ultimately the cure for so much of this lies in the realm of spirituality.